Praise the Lord. The Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Today we're going to be talking about righteousness, faith's platform. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1 says, Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now let me start off by saying this. Faith is of absolute importance to you and I as believers. The Bible says God has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Ephesians 1 verse 3. The Bible says that when God gave you Jesus... He also freely gives you all things. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. And again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 21 and 23, it says all things are, are yours. Later on in 2 Peter chapter 1 right here, it goes on to say, God has given unto you all things that pertain unto life and godliness. So all things are yours. You are joined heir with Christ and you are heir of God and are heir unto all things. However, the means by which you receive the blessings of the Lord, the promises of God, is by faith. Faith is like the currency that you use on, God, on, on the kingdom of God to, to exchange for whatever it is you have need of. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, without faith it is impossible to please God because they that come to God must believe, must believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek God. In fact, it goes on to say, in um, Romans 1 and verse 17, that the just, the righteous, those that God have, be, have made righteous, the saints, the just shall live by faith. You shall live by your faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So faith is of absolute importance. So when you were born again, God gave you faith as a gift. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, you were saved by grace through faith. It is a gift, not of works, lest any man should boast. And again, it says in Romans 12 verse 3, that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. The measure of faith. And in, and in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 13, it says, um, we have received the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, we believe and therefore speak. Here is the point. When you are born again, God gives you the measure of faith. And the measure of faith that God gives to you is the same measure that he gives to every child of God. None of us has any advantage over another. Peter says here that God has, that we have received like precious faith. Praise God forevermore. But you see, your faith has the power and the ability to receive from God and to walk in total dominion over all the works of the enemy. Your faith has the ability to tap in to the anointing of God and the power of God and the resources of God so that you can be totally victorious every single day of your life. That is why it says this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Now the devil knows that. So the devil wants to rob you of your faith. The devil wants to, to, to short-circuit your faith. The devil don't want you to operate effectively in faith. Now, here is what I want us to understand. The enemy, who is the accuser of the brethren, wants to bring you under condemnation, wants to bring you under the yoke of guilt, wants you to heap up, to bring your past before you, wants to heap up shame and inferiority on you. The enemy wants you to feel unworthy. Why is that? Because when you are operating underneath the yoke of condemnation and the yoke of insecurity and inferiority and guilt and shame, you are not able to come boldly before God with confidence and believe that you receive what you desire when you pray. In other words, then, when you are not able to, when you operate on need the yoke of condemnation and guilt, your faith becomes short-circuited, and you are not able to be as effective in the kingdom of God. So the devil would like to keep you in that place of bondage. 
But you see, this verse of Scripture here in 2 Peter chapter 1 says, You have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God. And I want to draw your attention to this. Like precious faith through the righteousness of God. What is the point? The point is this. Righteousness, righteousness delivers you from condemnation. It delivers you from fear. It delivers you from insecurity. It delivers you from shame and from every sense of, of unworthiness. Righteousness declares that God, that you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says, Jesus became sin for you so that you might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. What does that mean? Because of the shed blood of Jesus and because of your faith in that blood, God has removed your sins as far as the east is from the west. And the Bible says he will not remember your sins and your iniquities anymore. Because of the blood of Jesus, God treats you just as if sin had never been. And because of the blood of Jesus, Ephesians 1 verse 6 says, you are accepted. You are accepted. You have got righteousness as your very own nature. Righteousness is the divine nature of God, and that's your nature. It gives you a freedom and a liberty from, from condemnation, from guilt, from insecurity. Righteousness says God has totally accepted you, and that God sees you in Christ, and God will deal with you even as you would Jesus. Now, that being the case, Righteousness then delivers you from the very things that the enemy wants to use to cripple your faith. Righteousness delivers you from that sense of condemnation. Righteousness puts you in the position where you believe that God loves you as much as he loves Jesus. And that God will do for you what he will do for Jesus. And whatever you ask in Jesus' name, you can believe that he will do it. You can believe according to the word that he will grant it. Because you have a right to use that name and you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Here is my point. Righteousness then is not only is it, uh, is it a foundation for your faith. Not only is it right, but righteousness will protect your faith, guard your heart. And, and as we will see in a little while, righteousness can springboard you into a place where your faith will operate so effectively that it will be a mountain moving, miracle working faith. Turn with me to um, Romans chapter 1. Let's look at that. Romans chapter 1. We have received like precious faith through the righteousness of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 16, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Why aren't you ashamed of the gospel, Paul? Because it is the power of God. It is the power of God unto salvation. It is the power of God unto salvation. Now let's pause for a moment and think about that word salvation. That word salvation comes from the Greek word soteria. And that word salvation, yes, it includes being born again, but it means more than being born again. The word salvation means deliverance. It means rescue. It means preservation. It means happiness. It means prosperity. It means well-being. It means wholeness. It means protection. The word salvation is a big word. That word salvation means absolute, means the goodness of heaven and the grace of God, the abundant grace of God being available to you. So it says, Paul says, I am not ashamed of the gospel because the gospel is good news. Jesus died in your place, became everything you were that you can be everything so that you can have, so that he took your place, he took your sin so that you can have righteousness. He took your rejection so that you can be accepted. He took your shame so that you might have glory. He took the curse so that you might be blessed. He took the sickness so that you might be healed. He took the poverty and the shame so that you might be prosperous. That is the gospel. It is good news. And it is the power of God that says you've got a right to all the blessings of God. It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. You must believe the gospel for it to work for you. That is why it says faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because with faith, you've got to believe that God is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Meaning what? With faith, you got to believe not only that God is, but that God is good and that God will reward those that diligently seek him. So it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Why is it the power of God unto salvation, Paul? 
to everyone that believes. Verse 17. Because therein is the righteousness of God revealed. In the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. In the gospel, the reality that Jesus was made sin so that you might be made the righteousness of God, that's revealed in the gospel. Because of the revelation of the gospel is God is not holding your sins and your trespasses against you. The reality of the gospel is God has raised you up and has made you to sit in heavenly places in Christ. The reality of the gospel is Jesus' victory belongs to you. The reality of the gospel is you have got the authority to tread over all the works of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is the gospel. So the gospel is the power of God unto salvation because therein is the righteousness of God revealed. From faith to faith. Again, what is the point? The point is righteousness is the foundation and it is the platform upon which your faith is built. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But your faith becomes established and stable as you awake to righteousness. Because you see, you can get a hold of what the word of God says. And faith might come into your heart. But if you do not get a hold of the fact that God loves you as much as he loved Jesus. And you are free from sin and condemnation and inferiority. If you don't get a hold of the fact that you can have boldness and confidence before the throne of God. If you do not get a hold of the fact that God will answer your prayers just as he would anyone else in the name of Jesus. If you don't get a hold of that, then even though faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yet, your faith can be up and it can be down depending on whether you feel condemned, whether, the devil, whether, whether you believe the lies of the devil concerning your past. Here is my point. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but faith becomes established and stable because of righteousness. Now, let's take this another step further. The Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. The Bible says, and the part of the revelation of righteousness is, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit with God. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. The, the, the part of the revelation of righteousness is Jesus is the head, you are the body. Jesus is the vine, you are the branches. Again, this is a, it is a reality of oneness with him. This oneness that you have with him. And because of coming out of this oneness that you have with him, it means then that all... All that is in Christ belong to you. Because of this oneness, it means then that righteousness hooks you up with the fullness of God. Let's put it that way. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 9, that in him, in Christ, dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. In him you are complete and lack nothing. When you walk in the reality of righteousness, when you walk in the reality of this oneness that you have with God in Christ, and you are not conscious, and you are not self-conscious, but you are God-conscious. You are conscious of the fact that the greater one dwells within you. You become conscious of the fact that, that, um, that, that, that he is the head and you are the body. And you become totally lost in him. And you do not see yourself as a grasshopper. You do not see yourself in your own weaknesses, but you see yourself strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You see yourself clothed with the arm of God. When you have this kind of righteousness of God mindset, so to speak, or rather, when you have this kingdom of God within you mindset, because the Bible says the kingdom of God is within you. Luke chapter 17, verse 21. When you awake to this oneness that you have with God in Christ, what happens is you begin, this righteousness hooks you up with the fullness of God. Now, when you are hooked up with the fullness of God, it means all of the resources of God becomes available to you. So when you face challenges, when you face difficulties, you do not look at your, you do not become conscious of what you have and what you don't have in your natural self. But when you face challenges, you approach them in the authority of the name of Jesus. You approach them the way David approached Goliath. David did not approach Goliath being aware of his own, uh, 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 of himself. David approached Goliath being aware of the fact that God was backing him up. You see, Jesus says the government is on his shoulders. When you operate in the kingdom of God, and when you operate in the authority of righteousness, according to Hebrews 1 verse 8, the scepter of the kingdom is the scepter of righteousness. And when you operate in that righteousness, the, 
It activates the kingdom of God and the power of God, and Jesus will back you up. Operating in oneness with God and operating in righteousness makes the fullness of God available to you. And when the fullness of God becomes available to you, all things become possible. You move into a realm and you open up the door where impossibilities cease to exist. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And that is why it says, um, it says in, it says in um, Isaiah 54 and verse, eight and verse 14, it says, In righteousness shall they be established. In righteousness shall they be established. And they will be far from oppression because they shall not fear. That establishment in righteousness causes you to be free from fear. But now you see, when you're free from fear, it means you are closing the door to the enemy. Because fear will activate the devil, will activate the devil in his activities, the same way faith will activate God in the kingdom of God. So as you become established in righteousness, you shall not fear. Now look at this here. 1 John 4 verse 18 says, that as you become perfected in, in, in the love of God, the love of God will drive and flush fear out because fear has torment. Now, here's what I want to, want, I want, I want to draw a parallel here. Isaiah 54 verse 14 is saying, as you become established in righteousness, no fear. 1 John 4, 18 is saying, as the love of God becomes perfected in you, and you know that the Father loves you as much as he loves Jesus, what happens? No fear. As you recognize that as he is, so are you in this world. No fear. Now watch this for a moment. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19 says, that, as you, that, 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 um, that you will come to know the love of God, which passes all knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. So as we come into this place of becoming more and more established in, 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 in the righteousness of God, what happens? We begin to recognize that as Jesus is, so are we in this world. And the Father sees us as he sees Jesus. And that love of God, we begin to know that love of God. It drives fear out. We begin to know that love of God and we begin to be able to access the fullness of God. When you access the fullness of God, all things becomes possible. So here is the point. Righteousness then becomes not just a platform for faith, not just a foundation for faith, but righteousness becomes a springboard. It can springboard your faith where you can begin to operate in miracle working, miracle working, mountain moving faith. Here is what I want to emphasize. When you are able to eliminate and quench the enemy forces of condemnation and guilt and shame and inferiority and this sense of unworthiness, when you are able to, to eliminate that from your life by becoming established in righteousness, you will, your faith will become dynamic in its working. You will begin to operate in a miracle working faith. You will be able to speak to the mountain and believe in your heart and not doubt. And not doubt. And that is where we want to go. This aspect of becoming established in righteousness is so awesome. That the Bible says, the Bible says in, in um, Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 4, that righteousness delivers from death. Righteousness is so awesome that it will even deliver you from death. Now, let's pause, about, pause and think about that for a moment. So many times as believers, we are afraid of death. Well, the word of God says... In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, that Jesus partook of flesh and blood, and he tasted death for every man, that he might deliver you from the fear of death. Deliver you from that fear of death. Deliver you from that power. I'm not quoting that correctly. Let me turn to it and read it. Hebrews 2, verse 14, it says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. In other words, paralyze the enemy that had the power of death. That is the devil. And deliver them, that's you, who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. 
God has not called you to bondage. God has called you to liberty. There is a spirit on the inside of you that cries out, Abba, Father. And it's not a spirit of bondage. It is a spirit that says you've been adopted into the kingdom of God. That says you've been adopted into the family of God. That, that says you are the righteousness of God. And that you, by the power of the name of Jesus, don't even have to fear death. Righteousness delivers from death. First Corinthians chapter, chapter 3. Let's look at that briefly. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 22 says, at the bottom of verse 21 says, All things are yours, whether it be Paul or Apostles or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come. All are yours. Even death. Death is not supposed to have dominion over you. You are not supposed to live in the fear of death. The Bible says, you and I, you see, death is to rule over the ungodly. But as for you and I, for us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. For you and I to live is Christ and to die is gain. There is no fear of death for those that are operating in the reality of righteousness. Righteousness is so awesome that it will even deliver from the power of death. And God wants you and I to develop in that consciousness of righteousness so that our faith can have a platform. So that our faith can rise to miracle working power. So that our faith can be precious faith. Just like the one that Peter operated in when he saw the man at the gate of beautiful. And says, silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, such as I have, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. What was it? Peter was demonstrating that precious, miraculous, working power. That came as a result of operating in oneness with Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord God forevermore. Hallelujah. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. We need to close today. But I want to say this as we close. As you get a hold of righteousness. And you develop in the consciousness of it. And you awake to this oneness that you have with God in Christ. And you become established in it. And you do not allow condemnation and guilt and the accusations of the devil to stick to you. What will happen? You will be able to access more of the resources and the salvation that belongs to you. That's why, that's why Paul says, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation because therein is the righteousness of God revealed. You are the righteousness of God. The righteous and the just shall live by faith.